naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Checking the feeds here, make sure we're online, make sure we're broadcasting, I think we are, it's always easy to navigate and check these things out, and making sure we're on our, on the air, making sure, and we are, we're live, I want to welcome everybody to Iggy Garcia Live, I'm your friend Iggy Garcia, Ignacio Garcia, <clears throat> And I hope you can uh, stick around with for me. Stick around with me for about 60 minutes or so. I'm going to be talking here and sharing here a little bit with you a little bit. My feelings and emotions about uh, the topic that we're talking about, which is hmm, love. <laughs> but before we start every show, we always light our candle. And we give thanks to uh, the ancestors, those who came before us. Remembering them, honoring them for their sacrifice, for all the things that uh, that we have, uh, you know, attributed to our life, you know, our ancestors, how deep and how far I go. So I want to thank my family, my friends, and all those who guide me and watch me. Thank the Great Spirit for all your guidance and your energy, and to guide me in this journey today as I like this candle to my ancestors giving thanks to them for all the hard work that they did with all the tools and the information they had and you know sometimes we don't give them enough credit I would like to let that go as the show continues sometimes we uh, we don't think about the sacrifices that were made by uh, others before us and you know because we take things for granted because we're here now and sometimes when we're here we don't see the things that are in front of us the things that we have uh, going for us it's um it's easy to get distracted and say hey you know what well you know they did what they did and they had to do what they had to do and I mean, that's a lot of work that's a lot of energy when you think about that you know that's a lot of there's a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff that had to happen for you and me to exist for you and me you know for us to be in the place we are energetically spiritually emotionally physically you know and so and it's so easy to get caught in get caught up in life and just not worry about things you know one of my my teachers one of my teachers John McMullen you know he has a saying all that really exists is the infinite now and so when you think about that, you know, that's the infinite now is really all that we truly have. You know, everything that we're experiencing, everything that's going through our life is right now, but it's in the present moment. And that present moment is the now, you know. And I always say, we're in the now, we've won, you know, understanding. You know, change the now, flip it around to W-O-N, and we won. And so sometimes, you know, we, we don't give credit where credit is due and then some of us are like well, i didn't want to be born i didn't want to be here i i didn't ask for this life well it doesn't matter you're here you're here and whatever you do with it and it's really up to you no one can really tell you how you're supposed to experience it feel it you know indulge it ingest it just know that you're here and what you're going to do with it is truly up to you and you know there's a lot of people who or upset with their ancestors, a lot of people who are upset with um, all the things that happened in the past. And rightfully so, there's a lot of things that happened, you know, to us. You know, a lot of things that our ancestors did that we are not in congruency with, things that we just didn't that wasn't really our our what we asked for, and it's what it is. But we're here now. We're here and in this moment, you know, there's just things that we have to deal with and live with it and be part of it earlier i talked about uh, on 
on the mind of Iggy, I talked a little bit about the spiritual aspect of our physical body and how our body and our spirit are like intertwined and work together. And sometimes we could be so far outside here and so far outside here and we're not in, in that energy properly. You know, when we don't feed our physical body the right nourishments and stuff, it affects our spiritual body. Now, channel, channel, uh, granted, some of us can channel outside and move outside the body and move into the spiritual realms and do very well. But the majority of us don't do that. The majority of us aren't like that. The majority of us don't, aren't able, you know, to to be in that in that space, you know, to be able to, you know, move through the dimensional uh, parts of ourselves. Earlier today, I was talking to one of my friends, you know, Anne Marie. I was talking to her about, you know, how the 3Ds and the 5D worlds and how we can kind of interact and interchange and jump in and jump out. You know, when you're in the woods, that's like the 5D world coming to life. You, sometimes you're the only one there. Sometimes you're the only one there who gets to experience the infinite now. You know, that infinite now. It's good to be here. You know, when you're in that space and you're in that energy and when you're by yourself, it doesn't seem like there's any other human being in the planet, even though you know they're there. But that's the infinite gift, too, as well as it's infinite now when you're in that space. What is love? Well, hmm. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what is love? Is love the projection we give onto others? Or is love the pro projections others give onto us? But what is true love? True love is love of self, love of who we are. And sometimes that process is very difficult for us to work through because we build walls and we create these things and they kind of get in the way and the next thing you know, you know, we're not able to move through it. And, you know, the thing is, you know, when when we talk about loves, the ego is one of those things that's, you know, it's only capable of conditional love. And I think that's why a lot of people get confused with their egos and they get challenged by their egos because... Everything's so conditional with the ego. The ego is so precise and wants everything done a certain way. So how do we create unconditional love? Through our spirit of self, the spirit of love, spirit of who we are. And for a lot of us, we've never been loved, so we don't have good teachers and good uh, reference points of what that means to, for self-love and self-expression. Because most of us work from a place of fear or anger. You know, little kids, they're usually... They're usually afraid, you know, so they, but they express it, you know, mom, dad, I'm afraid. Adults, no, they just get angry. You know, they get, they say, screw you. You know, they're like, F you, you know. You ever watched adults driving down the road during traffic? And when it's crazy time, I call it crazy time, you know, freeway time when you're trying to get home. So that's how we, as adults, we share and how we express, you know, when we're afraid. And that is. That affects how we love ourselves and how we share with ourselves. So many of us try to understand what self-love is, but we've not had good teachers. And the teachers that we have had, well, they didn't have good teachers either. But here's an, here's an opportunity for you <coughs> to create self-awareness, self-love of who you are as a human being on this planet. You know, to you know to be able to do the things you want to do but it's you know it's one of those things you gotta we just gotta understand you know that the unconditional love is that of the spirit that of ourselves spirit self that's the unconditional aspect that sometimes we miss as human beings now the whole world right now is is polarized the whole world right now is just living on shame you know there's just everything's just everything about it thing is just imploding everything about Spirit is just happening right now in the universe and in this planet. You know, we have Russia attacking, you know, Ukraine. We have civil wars in Yemen. We have, you know, things happening in different parts of the Middle East. It's just chaos. Chaos is ruling right now. Chaos is what's happening because there's unhappiness. There's unhappiness amongst people, amongst leaders, amongst people. And, you know, that fear of lack mentality, that fear not to have... That fear that we're not good enough. That fear that others are going to screw us. You know, it's fear. You know, even when a superpower has fear that it may collapse, that it may have its days numbered. 
because it's people long for more. It's people long for le- for things to change. So this is what I'm saying. You know? So we're like, hmm, love. Love is something we, we have to open ourselves to. Love, open our spirit and our soul. But sometimes we're so angry and so traumatized about the things that happen to us that it's hard to find that love connection with ourselves because we're so disenfranchised of who we are and what we how we see ourselves and how others people how the people project on us you know a lot of us there's a lot of projections put on us because as soon as we want to change as soon as we want to move into a new environment a new space people remember us how we were versus how we going to are how we're going to be because they don't have any reference points they don't have any way to validate you and to say hey that's that person is that used to be like this. Oh no, don't trust them. They're going to be, you know, they're going to be like this. They're going to, they're going to move into the into a and into a back to their old habits, back to their old place. Just give it time, give it time, you know. But our inner dialogue inside of our head, that piece of us that's always talking to ourselves, always communicating with us, saying, "Hey, you know what? We really need to, we need to really connect with ourselves. We really need to." You know, fortify with ourselves, love ourselves, honor ourselves. But the thing is, it's a step, it's a process, it's something that has to happen naturally. Because sometimes when we want to move into that energy where we want to be better, we have to go through the mud first to realize that, you know, in order for us to be better, we have to remember the things that weren't so good about us. And sometimes our ego gets triggered by that. And so the ego doesn't want us to have that. So it creates that conditional love no if they love me they're going to treat me like that if they truly care about me they're just going to accept me for how i am you know but here's the problem is when people when you change when you decide to be different human being when you decide that you no longer want to be the human that you were once you know when you decide that you know you need to change your life and things have to be different you're going to have challenges you're going to have people come into your life people are going to say hey you know what I don't believe you. I don't trust you. It's more about their fears and their emotional stuff and about them saying, screw you. You can't change. You can't change because I don't want to change. I don't want to change. I don't. If if you change, I might have to change. Oh, shit. I might have to change. I don't want to change. Don't change. Stay. Stay myself. Stay like me. Stay like me. We'll be together and we'll be fun and we'll have a good time. That's what happens to a lot of people. And the people who try to step out of their environments, you know, that they were dysfunctional, find themselves in these in these conundrums sometimes. And then when they come to their spiritual leaders and they come to people who are in their groups, they tell them the story, oh my God, they're treating me like this. You know, they're dropping off like flies. That's good. That's a good sign. That's a good good indicator that you are on the right track of self-love and self-healing and self-emotional care. You know, taking ownership of yourself, you know, having that inner dialogue with you, you know, that happiness or unhappiness, addressing it. That's what we're supposed to do as humans. But we've been so conditioned to be in this place and to feel a certain way. And, you know, we, and we're just as guilty, too, because our programming, too, we, we're, we're working on changing it. And, you know, it's not easy, friends. It's not easy to change the programming that we've had for however age you are. I'm 55, so imagine all the programming I have. Everything from 1 to 22, probably, 23, 24, 25, however long my parents were alive. Jeez, they're still there. They're still in my head. They're still teaching me. They're still parenting me. Because I allow it. So when I don't allow, when I when I drop away, you know those things, then it makes it easier. As we progress, as we move through this new incarnation of ourselves, in creating ourselves, you know, sacrificing, you know, our future parts. Because when we sacrifice, when I say sacrifice, we're sacrificing the potentials to make things different. So if you were on the road of self-destruction and then you want to change, you have to sacrifice the old version of yourself. You have to let it go. And the thing is, it's hard to let go 
of old habits sometimes. And I tell you, man, people, they're gambling on you. They're gambling on you to just fail. They don't want you to succeed. Like I tell you, misery enjoys company. That's an old saying. And people would rather be in misery with you than apart from you. Because you brought them joy. Remember, you know, ask yourself, why do people like people? Why do you like certain groups of people? Why do you hang out with certain groups of people? Why why do you particularly hang out with a, a certain group of um, friends or acquaintances? Why? Because there's familiarity there. There's something that's very familiar. There's something that's very unique. Something that feels safe. Feels like familiar to you. But the moment you take it away, the moment that you go... I gotta step out. When they step in and try to, you know, find that whole, that space where they fit in, <clears throat> it, you know, it just totally collapses. And then they start to play the blame game, but it's their blame game. It's their game. You know, we go through life feeling like we're not enough sometimes. We're not enough for ourselves. We're not enough for other people. We're not enough. We're not worthy of acceptance. Worthy of the changes that our plight is our, you know, our destiny. You know, I tell my students and I tell my friends all the time. You know, we have a pre a destined life. You know, we're we're born and we're going to die. And there's things that happen in the middle. And in somewhere you might die in the process. But the experience of, you know, living, okay, that infinite now is what's very powerful, very important. That's the part I'm talking about. The experience of love, the experience of what it means to be able to do. You only have technically this life to live. You have other lives to live, other lives to be part of or whatever your beliefs are. Excuse me. But in this incarnation... You just have this one. Now you can live multiple lives within this one by shifting your perceptions and shifting your feelings, your emotions, and shifting the things that you <clears throat> perceive are not worthy for you or you want radical change in your life. Those are the experiences I'm talking about. That's what we have control of. How you experience your life, how you experience your destiny. Your destiny is yours to control. Your destiny is yours. You know, in the back of your mind, we all know we're going to perish. One day we're going to go back to the earth. We know that. And nobody ever thinks they're going to die. No one ever thinks that they're just going to go. No one knows. Nothing is guaranteed on this planet. But we know. But how do we push that aside? How do we push that to the back? Give it to their ego. Because, you know, the ego has conditions. The ego wants things in certain order. So when you're trying to self-love and trying to navigate through this world, that's the thing. Our experience, the infinite now, how we experience the infinite now. You are part of the infinite now. You are the infinite now. We are all part of the infinite now. But the problem is we have so much conditioning, so much brainwashing, so much controlling, so much uh, information, so much Google, so much YouTube, so much blah, 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 you fill in the blank, that we get all inundated with information. And then whatever, be, what is more important? Then you'll have to decide what is important for you. But the thing is this, you have to make sure that as you're moving through life and taking these snapshots through your life, what's important, what's value for you? What is that? What is that moment that, you know solidifies your change what is enough what is the moment where you just say I'm, I'm done I, I'm going to live or I'm going to check out and checking out doesn't mean you kill yourself you can check out mentally physically spiritually emotionally and just to so stop living you start you know creating scenarios that bring you into conditional love Expectable, expecting love, certain types of love. But unconditional love, that true form, that spirit love, is when we're flexible and we're moving constantly. Now, I'm not going to tell you it's easy, folks. 
because it's not. It's not easy. Sometimes we have to struggle, and the struggle is what makes us. You know, your cake has to bake before you eat it. I mean, if you like gooey cake that's not cake yet, then eat it. Eat a tummy ache. But the point is, bake it. Bake your cake. You know, that's why we make things. This is why there's recipes. This is why there's formulas. This is why things are done a certain way. You know, when you add certain components to your life, it changes. You have to find the spices and the recipes in order to change your life, in order to move your life into the direction that you want it to be. Because nobody else is going to do this for you. Nobody. Nobody's here to help you. No one's here to tell you. No one's going to hold your hand. No one's going to do whatever. But they're, they'll encourage you. And they will push you to the directions you want to go. But you have to only, you really truly, if you want to make things happen, you got to take the first steps. Listen, when you got to go to the bathroom, you get up and you go, right? You don't hold off a well, you know, I'm going to hold this because... You know, I just don't really want to go right now. But your body's going, hey, man, we got to go. The body knows. See, this is what's so interesting about humanity, spirit, in the human body. The body knows when it's sick. The body knows when it has to purge. The body knows when it has to release. But our stubborn self, the mind here, the ego mind, it, it causes so much problems for us sometimes because we want to be in control. We want to be in control. Oh, you were. No, this is my body. I'm going to go to the bathroom when I'm ready. No. You got to go when you got to go. You got to eat when it's time to eat. If you don't want to eat, you don't eat. Because it's a, it's a universal connection love. It's a spirit love. It's that love. Your body loves you. Do you love your body? Do you love your mind? Do you love your spirit? Do you love your soul? These are the things that we have to work on. You know, because what happens is the ego, the ego, the ego is conditioned. It's conditional love. It knows what it needs to do. That's conditional love, man. I got to take it to the bathroom because if we don't go to the bathroom, we can get septic and we can get sick. And eventually we might poop our pants too. I'm not trying to be gross here, but I'm just trying to give you some examples. How simple it is, you know. There's, we're no different than a car. We're actually very, very similar. You got to change the oil. Sometimes we have to eat better foods to flush our blood and purify our blood, purify our system. We drink water. You know, we eat food. We put gas in it. This is part of who we are. This is how we work. This is the grand design. This is the infinite love. This is the infinite now. This is God creator. This is great spirit in all its infinite wisdom, knowing what it needs, what you need. In that moment, in that time. So, hmm, love is very powerful. Hmm, love can change worlds. Love can change everything. The world could be falling apart. And you can still be manifesting and creating and doing. Because you know what? Other people are doing it right now. Other people are creating right now. Other people are manifesting and creating. You know, other people are in the place where they're doing stuff. Now... I'll be honest with you, most of us, most of us, you know, who are online or who, who are complaining about stuff in their life that's happening, it's kind of on us. Yeah, there are circumstances that maybe put you in a certain hole, but in the end, you're the one that has to make the final decisions of what self-love is, what you're going to do, what you're going to make happen. You know, you can only hear somebody complain so many times about the same thing over and over to the point where you just don't listen to them after a while you just like no oh, here we go again you can tell them their story well i can't find a job and why can't you find a job because number one probably because you don't like that job number two because that's not what you want to do and number three you might just be damn lazy you know sorry to tell you that that but there are people like that i know many people like that it just drives me nuts but hey you know what that's their life and that's their choices but it does affect other people when they make those kind of choices sometimes. But it's it's because they're they're lacking something in their life. What it is, I have no clue. But it, obviously something's missing. Most people aspire to do better. Most people aspire to do greatness. Most people 
most people, people I, I've never met anybody who grew up and says, hey, you know what, I don't want to do anything in my life. I just want to be a loser. You know, I just want to, I've never, I don't think I've ever met anybody like that. Now, life has beaten them up. Life has brought them down. Life has put them in a situation where they had to make different decisions. And sometimes the decision wasn't necessarily the best decision, but it happened. You know, earlier I was talking to Amory and I was telling her, I said, hey, you know what? All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. We hypnotize ourselves to believe that some of the craziest, stupidest things or some of the most amazing things. We're always constant in the self of hypnosis all the time. Hello. Did you hear that? All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. We hypnotize ourselves constantly. You turn on the TV, you get hypnotized, you, you know, until something triggers you and snaps you out of it. You know, in the drum circles, we're drumming. Boom, 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 boom. We're all in the same cadence, all same rhythm. Boom, boom, boom. That's a hypnosis. When we want to listen to somebody in, 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 in golf and really hear what they have to say, it's... Is self hypnosis, you know, because that's what humans do. We do that. That's just our character. That's our nature. We get hypnotized, and you know what? Quite frankly, it'll keep happening to the day you die. But to be aware of it <clears throat> is to have self love to know. But you know, our lives are where they are because of the choices that we mostly made, and other choices that other people made for us. But here's what I know. The choices that other people made for us, and long, unless they're paying our bills, unless they're, you know, we have a contract contractual agreement with them, then they they pretty kind of have a a little say of what happens in our lives. But if nobody's doing that, and you can't seem to get out and find the self love and find the self worth of yourself, and you know there may be some chemical imbalances and things physical. Indifferences that may affect your decision making process that's possible that's true at the same time but for a lot of us we're not like that a lot of us can make very good decisions making process in decisions but a lot of us don't want to make those processes because it means we have to get uncomfortable we have to get a little bit naked a little bit vulnerable and change our lifestyle and change, see the world in much different eyes but a lot of people won't, won't change because they're not willing to administer a dose of self-love and honor themselves. It's a disservice to yourself when you don't honor yourself and want better for yourself. Yeah, you want better for everybody else. But the illusion is you have to give to yourself as much as you give to other people. You know, you're out there giving, volunteering, you're helping, but you're not making a penny. But your soul feels great. Oh, yeah, I feel great. You don't feel so great when the rent's due. You don't feel so great when the car payment's due. You don't feel so good when the phone has to be paid. You don't feel so great when you you got to pay this or pay that. But you got to believe that it's all going to be taken care of. Because when you start to believe in yourself, then you start to create the patterns to put you in the right places, to put you in the right things. And most, most children come from a place where they're afraid. And, you know, adults come from a place from anger, which is afraid. And like I told you earlier, most adults just say, screw you, man, get out of my face. That's a, that's a form of fear because they can't express themselves. And, and, and feeling shame that they're not enough. A lot of the reasons we do this because we feel the shame. Listen, you know, those of you who are religious... Whatever order you or you know, subscribe to, in your books, they talk about God's grace, Spirit's grace, in the way Spirit comes to you and delivers messages to you, or delivers help to you. But we have this illusion that it's supposed to be grandiose sometimes, that it has to be this magical event, that it has to be like, because that's what we do, we're, we're, we're just, we're like that. And sometimes it's the smallest little thing and we miss it completely because we're looking for this huge thing and sometimes it's wrapped in a teeny little box with a huge answer. And sometimes we get the big box and we open it up and there's nothing inside except the potentiality of what you want to create. So if you want to create, you may open another box, might be another box, another box, 
Then you get to the little box again. You know, the great spirit sends you messages all the time. Are you listening? Are you but are you ignoring? You know, because you know what? After a while, people just gonna assume that you're that way. Ah, they're just that way. That guy, that girl, that guy. They're like that. They're like that because they don't care. You know what? Because people people create an illusion of you. They project onto you the things that how they experience you, how they feel about you, how you make them feel. And the true or not, it's real. It becomes real. You know, there are people out here who think that I'm the nice guy, and there are people who think that I'm just the biggest jerk that ever lived. And you know, for me, it doesn't really freaking matter. Because I have to be alright with myself. Because in the end, it doesn't really matter what they care about. They're gone doing their own thing. If I worried about every person who thought anything about me, I'd be a basket case. Personally, me personally. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about anybody else. I'm just talking about me. I don't have time to worry that I don't drum like other people. Oh, I don't know how to play African drum. Or I don't know how to do this. Or uh, I know how to do what's good in my heart, in my spirit, my soul. You know, I know what's good for me. And I share that with other people. If they like it, great. If they don't, great. You know, when, when I got to that place in my life, things got a whole lot better. Because it wasn't about anybody. It was always about me. It's always been about me. My beliefs, my projections, my illusions, my creations have always been about me and about how I see other people. You know, people just people. People do what they do. How I feel and how I'm triggered by it and how they approach me and how they address me or how they acknowledge me. It's just circumstances because that's what we do as humans. But you know, when, when someone violates you, when someone violates you, you have to make decisions as well, right? You don't stay in the violation. You get out, right? You move forward. But yet, so many of us get violated constantly by a, a hug or, or a wink or or someone saying something that we didn't like. But we just let it go past. Oh, you know, it's just icky. It's just, it's just being funny. No, it's just Jack. It's just Lucy. You know, they're, they're just being funny. Someone doesn't say your name right. Is it better to correct them or just sit there and quiet? It depends on the moment. If they're doing it facetiously and they're doing it purposely, it's time to correct them. But if they do it out of mistake and error, that's one thing. Then you can educate. Then you can reciprocate from that. But so many of us get hung up. But I just want to let you guys know, take a little break here, do a little commercial break. Uh, Serenity Salt Spa at SerenitySaltSpa.com is sponsoring this show. Uh, for those of you who have not been to the salt room, come on down, check it out. Uh, we have a special this month, three sessions for $50. So, But you can only get that on SerenitySaltSpa.com. So come check us out. We're in Westerville. And if um, you want to make a session, just go online, do the scheduler, set up your appointment. And meet me in the spa room. All right. That was our plug for that. <sighs> so a lot of us, we, 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 we live in the unawakened, unawakened stages of life. You know, we're polarized. You know, that we're just not good enough. And, you know, how do we change that? How do we, how do we change those extremes? How do we change those paradoxes about ourselves? Those, those feelings and emotions about ourselves. Sometimes we don't even recognize that we're in there. Sometimes we don't even recognize that we're in that processing, in that feeling, that emotion of that. And sometimes it just, it drives us nuts. But what is self-love? What is self-love? Hmm. What is love? So give me some examples, guys. Of what you think self-love is. You know. 
you know, write it in the comments. Self-love is understanding that you're not going to get it right all the time. Self-love is understanding that others aren't going to get it right. Self-love is knowing that even though things bad are going on in the world, it doesn't mean that you have to be bad. It doesn't mean that you have to side with anybody. It doesn't mean that you have to do anything. Self-love is knowing. For some people, it's God. You know, putting their faith in, in something that is external from them. But yet, they're a piece of the creation. You know, God made us, so we're part of God. So there's a creative part of, of ourselves in that, intertwined in that. That's pretty powerful, knowing that we're part of God. You know, that's pretty deep. That's the infinite now. That's the infinite love, infinite power. That's all that really exists. You know, something created everything. What that is, that will be according to your belief systems. And I'm not here to, to project on that. Just asking questions. Just asking how you connect and what makes, makes love. How do you express self-love to others? How are you, what is self-love to you? Setting boundaries. What does it mean to set boundaries? To set a boundary. Is the boundary really for somebody else? Or is the boundary really for you? About others. About how you project onto them as much. Or is it both? Can it be both? The illusion is that we set boundaries so people won't violate our boundaries. But sometimes we set boundaries so we don't violate others. Through the process of trying to understand who they are and who we are. Setting boundaries is powerful medicine, powerful tool. But remember, when you set boundaries, may they be realistic for you. Maybe there are things that you don't, not locked in a place where you feel like that's all. Setting boundaries is just landlocks you. Setting boundaries is understanding that you are also creating boundaries for yourself. How you navigate with other people in your in your life. Compassion, empathy, patience. Compassion. When we show compassion to others, it's because we're showing compassion to ourselves. Hopefully, that we can show compassion to who we are. When we have compassion for ourselves, then we can give double the compassion to others. And others will see your compassion. And that's important. Empathy. Not having sympathy, but empathizing that someone is going through something. That sometimes there's no answer. There's no no way to express except supporting them. Very powerful. And patience. Patience is one of the things is how patient can we be? How patient can we be? Patient, being a patient person, means that you're an impatient person. Because when we're waiting for patience, we hope that someone understands what we're trying to share. So, how many people have been patient with you? What is the limit for your patience? Good question, guys. Good, good stuff. And other people, they buy, they, I love taking flowers to someone sad. Or buy a meal for someone in a restaurant. So we also give to others. We gift feelings, emotions, things. And that's good. Because when you're giving to another person, it's because you're also learning, teaching yourself to give to yourself. When you give to another person a dinner or whatever, when's the last time you gave yourself a dinner? When's the last time you took yourself out? When's the last time you had a steak? When's the last time you had a big salad just for you? Sometimes we want to give to others. But this is how we practice. By helping others, we help ourselves. And to understand that we're not expecting anything in return is a very powerful tool too. Knowing that 
we help others unconditionally because we have to give love self love if we have conditions that i gave you i bought you a meal then that's ego that's conditional love you're setting parameters and boundaries why you want to do that so you know love comes in many shapes forms and sizes in in our country here in in the english speaking languages we we only truly have one word for love and that that's love but it's used a lot with inflection i love you i love you or i love you or i love you or when you're sad i love you you know one of the biggest thing is it may be i'm projecting too so a lot of you at some point or another have been told that talking to yourself is not necessarily a cool thing to do but self-talk is powerful self-talk talking to ourselves communicating with ourselves listening to ourselves the voices in our head that some things we have to share you know there's so much about what we do you know in 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 in, in gratitude and servitude we really only listen to what we tell ourselves and sometimes we're in confliction and we have to ask and you know bounce ideas off another person to kind of get an answer about who we are and sometimes as humans we get confused and we need help and so the gift of listening is a powerful love tool listening to another human being express themselves and sometimes giving them an answer and sometimes not but listening and loving and honoring them and who they are other people search love through connection through higher sources of, of being sources of creation and love the main thing is to honor yourself honor who you are as a human being honor the space that you're at give back to yourself as you give to others sometimes we give so much of ourselves that we deplete our energy deplete our feelings deplete our emotions of who we are we sacrifice so much of ourselves in future parts of ourselves okay in order to move into a better space to validate who we are sometimes and validation is important because that's what we are we're loving creatures we want to be valid we want to be recognized for what we do we want to be acknowledged that we're on the right path to doing the right things and it's hard to get it from ourselves sometimes because we don't trust ourselves sometimes we don't believe ourselves sometimes because we've been told that we're bad we're not good that we're we're just not worthy enough why why would i but the point is understanding that it's good to be here and it's infinite now that every moment is precious every moment no matter if you waste it in anger or you waste it in joy or you waste it and i don't even want to use the word waste but you know when you just use it in that space that every moment is precious that infinite preciousness that infinite now you are the person you are today because how you've molded your own belief systems about who you perceive yourself to be how you teach the world to teach treat you you teach others how to treat you you teach others how to acknowledge you you treat others how to commune with you so you have to ask yourself how am i communicating to others how am i communing with others is very important very powerful medicine when we start to self realize have self realization about who we are in the big scheme of life because we're all intricate piece we're all valuable piece in life and every piece is important every piece is is there you know and self love is not easy but it's not hard either and that's the rub the rub is it's not hard it's not easy but it is can be done and you know what there's days you're not gonna love yourself there's gonna be days you're not gonna you're not gonna be in congruence with yourself you're not gonna be like you know you're gonna wake up you're just gonna you're gonna have a shitty morning you're just gonna be like nah, i don't care uh, you know because you know that's what we do we're human we're human beings we're supposed to feel our feelings and our emotions 
And when we're hot, we're hot. And when we're cold, we're cold. And when we're lukewarm, we're lukewarm. And that's okay. The question is how long you stay in those feelings and emotions. How long you want to stay. How long do you want to be angry? How long do you want to be sad? How long do you want to be happy? Where's your level point? Where's your place? Where's that scale for you? But you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. You know, you'll figure it out. You know? Little kids, they say, you hurt me. They tell you. Little kids are honest. Adults, they scream and yell. And what they're really telling me is, you hurt me. I'm angry at you. Because you triggered the emotions in me. And that's what happens with adults. We're just little kids in big adult suits you know sometimes we're 10 sometimes we're 15 sometimes we're 1 sometimes we're 2 sometimes we're 22 but regardless you carry all versions of yourself maybe the memories of 25 years old is not as clear as it used to be but you're still 25 in there there's a 25 year old in there you know the question is, are you childlike or childish? So if you're childlike, that's okay. If you're childish, that could be a problem for some people. Especially if you have a significant other or a spouse. You know, because she some, or he, they married a man or they married a woman. Or vice versa. But when we connect and we find another human being to complement us because no one ever can complete us the illusion of self completion means that then we're done it's like over we complement each other sometimes we fall short sometimes we get it and hit the mark but the understanding is that we know that you know if we're waiting for somebody to complete us and they're, all, well, they're also there to deplete us. So what you give and what you put out, you get back. So if someone compliments you, works with you and a part of you, then you'll understand you'll have good times and bad times. Then you won't be, you won't get let down. What happened to you? Where'd you go? You used to be like this. You changed. But see, the longer a relationship goes, the longer it goes. I've been married almost 33 years there's different versions of myself the 20 year old Iggy with kids you know small kids the 30 year old Iggy with teenagers middle schoolers the 40 year old Iggy with high schoolers you know the 50 year old Iggy with grandchildren my cells have replicated and changed Completely out of my body in that whole 33 years. I'm not the same human being, but I carry the programming. I carry the knowledge in all the things that I did here inside my mind, inside my brain, which has never seen light before. It can only translate and try to process the information it knows. I look at myself on the camera and it's me, but it's it looks different. I look different. I feel different. But I love that person's evolution, that person who's changed through life, that person who's had good days and bad days, that person who lost his mom, his dad, his sister, that person who was in the hospital with COVID. And I look at that person and I'm going, wow, we've, we've done a lot of things. We've done a, a, amazing things and some questionable things and we really screwed it up a little bit. But we got it right a lot of time. Did I always love myself? I would lie. I'd be lying to you if I said yes. Did I have doubts about things? Sure. But as much as doubt, I had more belief. More belief that I was going to do better. That I was going to do things that are just what I'm capable of doing. Now, could I have done more in my life? Sure. But you know what? Circumstances that I've created, circumstances that I've created for me, sometimes put us in a place where we have to do the best we can in that moment, in that time. And then we have to reevaluate 
if we want to move out of that space, do better, what's good enough, we're constantly going to be doing this. That's what self-love is reflecting on ourselves, going back and checking on who we are, believing on the things we need to believe. You know, checking our belief systems, checking the friendships we have, you know, checking on our kids, checking on the people we love. Because you know what? People shift, people change. And when they change, it's because they're trying to figure out the self-love and worthiness of themselves. So a lot of people aren't changing in the way because of you. They're changing because they're trying to work on themselves and find pieces and parts of themselves that are frozen in time that they just don't know how to move that energy. And when you're able to move the energy at some point and you figure out the tools to do that, it becomes a miracle, it becomes a magical thing. Some of us go to psychiatrists, some of us go to counselors, some of us go to shamans, some of us go to Reiki practitioners, some of us get massages, some of us go to the chiropractor. Isn't that self-love when we find those things, when we, we're trying to find the unconditional love, someone who can help us move energy, move the things inside of us? Some of us go to, you know, religion. Some of us pray to a higher, a higher source. Some of us disconnect from the higher source in order to make our mind clear to find answers that maybe were, you know, blurred by another person's projections and belief systems. And that happens a lot. And that's why people sometimes they have to find their path, find their way, find their journey. You know, life is a journey, not a destination. You ever heard that? Like when I teach my students in the work that I do, you know, I ask my friend today, I said, you know how many students, you know how many of my students are shamans? She didn't really have an answer. Zero. I don't have, there's not one shaman. They're shaman in training. Who I could say they can do the work I do under the guidance of my teachings in the work that I've done through my family lineage and stuff and through the things I've learned there's zero why because the process of learning the work that I do there are tests and trials that will test your endurance and test your mind your ability your heart your spirit your soul to make sure that you're on the right track for yourself and a lot of people just fall away because it's, it challenges their belief systems. It challenges their core. And some people don't like the pace that I'm on. The pace that I put them on. You want to get a weekend certificate? Then you become a shaman practitioner. You're, you're practicing shamanism. You're not a shaman. That's why they call you practitioner. To become... A shaman is to suffer, is to learn, is to understand, to get naked. That's why I call us show the naked shaman. You have to get down. You have to strip down core beliefs sometimes. And you have to examine yourself. You have to get open to heal. I'm still healing. I'm still working. I'm going to work to the day I die. It wasn't until 2011 that I was actually given my shaman name by my shaman teacher. This is how it goes. Even though I was practicing shamanism and, and doing the work that I was doing. But that's how it goes. Now there are good people out there with some very good knowledge and base foundation from who I've helped and I've worked with. And I've helped throughout the years and who've entrusted me to teach them. But this, all the work we do, holistic, metaphysical, whatever, it's all about self love. It's not about getting somewhere and being someplace or being titled to something. It's about self awareness, self love, that unconditional love of you. Because, like I always tell my students, the most powerful person on the table is the person on the table the person who comes with their hurts and their traumas they're the most powerful not the shaman the shaman is a hollow tube the vessel where spirit works through you the great spirit works and channels through you helps find the solution for them 
if we can find them in that moment in time. When you're open in recepting, in receiving, in sharing. But the most powerful person is on the table because they dictate if they heal or don't heal. They have to trust you and you have to listen to them and you have to engage and share with them what it means to have self-love and self-compassion for themselves. It's, it's easy to say I love somebody else. I care about other people. I love people. I help people. I volunteer every week at the food shelter. I, I'm such a good person. It's great. It's awesome. What do you give back to yourself is what's of value. What do you give you? What? But no, but that's what that's what it is. That's all I'm talking about. It goes deeper than that. What do you give you? What is what centers you? What is the true yanks in your spirit? You know, it's easy to mask it with good deeds. But what is it you truly desire? What is it you truly want in your heart and your spirit? What is it that you're not getting? That you can't fill? And you know, a lot of people don't have an answer to that. Because they've never been taught to love themselves. They've always been taught to be external and give love to others. Because if they give enough love to others, they're going to find love in themselves. Does it work that way? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? But acknowledging self is powerful medicine. So I hope that you were able to grab some tidbits here and there. Some little pieces and parts. Things that would help you move forward into you know, your life. I hope that you all have a great Easter. Excuse me, those who celebrate Easter. And those who are in, you know, observing Ramadan and going through the fasting. I hope that you find the peace and the self-love. You know, it's easy to find self-love externally through things but when you start to look externally you have to look internally why you're doing it and why you're feeling it like when you're fasting you're not eating it makes you process and think when you go to easter there's a lot of reasons you go to easter services or you hang out with your family because we we want to remember the sacrifices because life has always been about sacrifices even the great sages have sacrificed. You know, man always sacrifices. Even God sacrificed. So, it's just because we have to understand who we are. Who are we? Hmm, love. Because we are love. And love is always trying to express itself through you, with you, in you, all the time. Most of the time, all the time, we're loving, we're love, ready to express itself in the most positive way. Sometimes love can be a little this way or that way. But your love, I'm love, because we're of the creation. All right, guys, that's about all I have for today, and I really appreciate your time. I want to say thank you to everybody who's tuned in. It's good to be here. What is above is below. Namaste. Yirisikwi. Aho. And be well. Enjoy your weekend. Stop by the Serenity Salt Spa. Visit me. Have a session with me. Set up an appointment at a time. We can share. We can work. But do the best. And be the best version of yourself that you can be. Share with the world what it means to be love, to share love. Just be everything that you truly want to share. This is your time, this is your opportunity to be and to share with the world the pieces and the parts that are amazing about you. In healing the pieces and the parts that hurt you. 
This is a time for infinite now, infinite love. It's good to be here. All that really exists, like I said earlier, is the infinite now. In the infinite love. Be well, guys. Take care. I will see you soon. I will see you next time on Iggy Garcia Live, The Naked Shaman. And uh, we'll see you soon. And I'll see you next week. Take care. And peace and love. Bye-bye.